What would life be like if we could own things just by claiming them on a first come first served basis? This simulation lets students consider that question by simulating the rationing of land in American history in that very manner, the Oklahoma land rush of 1893. As student boomers engage in the chaos and excitement of racing for land, they participate in a common experience they can analyze and evaluate afterwards. The debriefing helps them sort through the experience, highlighting the exorbitant and largely unrecognized cost of this much storied method of rationing property rights in the American West. For this activity, you will need a large open space in your classroom, sticky notes, one to 200 inexpensive poker chips, at least five per student, masking tape, two large bags of Hershey Kisses or similar small divisible candies, and the rules and scenario visuals included in the lesson materials. Students will be working in family groups of four. Determine how many groups you will need, then clear a large space in the center of the classroom. Use four or five desks or chairs as land plots. You will want fewer land plots than there are families, so not every family will get land. Spread them out at one end of the room with two to three feet around each one. Place a sticky note on each chair, marking each sticky note with a one, two, three, or four to indicate that different land plots have different values. You may even want to randomly place a few chairs in the room as detours students will have to maneuver around. Tape a line to the floor at the other end of the room, behind which families must wait for the race to begin. Begin class with a discussion about what it means to own something. Guide the discussion to this definition, that to own something means that society recognizes your right to use it, to exclude others from using it, and to transfer ownership if you want to. We treat things differently when they own them. Uh, Tomas rented a rental car for the week, so did I. Uh, and are you going to watch that before you return it? No. No. Have a kid buy anything out to come drag racing with him, you know, to, to <laughs> Today, the class will be doing a simulation of a famous episode in American history where the government gave away land on a first come, first served basis the Oklahoma Land Rush of 1893. Show the scenario visual included in the lesson materials and read through it with the class. Emphasize that families brought everything they owned with them, their resources packed into wagons. Congress then authorized the land rush in 1893, in which thousands of people came from all over to claim free land. <laughs> Has anybody seen the movie Far and Away? Okay. Um, so if you haven't, younger people, see, it's one of those kind of Ameri classic American um, Americana movies. But it, it does a great job of setting up that scene of what it would be like, maybe what it might be like to be there, you know, at the starting point, at the jump line, racing for that free land. Plus, it has Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman back in there together. <laughs> so, um, Congress then, so they, they authorize all these people are buying up, and that's where this game is going to start. You're going to be part of a family, and your family has spent scarce resources to get to the starting point because you want a chance at free land. So, you made it there in 1893. You traveled across the country, you're very excited. You brought all of your resources with you, all of your valuable possessions that your family has. They're loaded up on the on your wagons, 
Um, that could be things like your pianos. So those are going to be represented in this game by these little plastic chips, these poker chips. And um, so these represent everything that's important to you. Tools, you want to take good care of these things. If these fall on the ground, they're ruined. Divide students into their family groups of four. If you have extra students, designate them to be race marshals and managers for the simulation. Marshals make sure families follow the rules before and during the race. Managers distribute game pieces before the race and candy after. Marshals, I'm gonna have a few marshals that are gonna help me in this activity. And um, your objective will be to carry, to kind of watch for any people that are breaking the rules. We wanna watch for any suitors, any people that are kind of jumping across the line before we say go. Um, you know, I, you have permission to shoot them. <laughs> That's what's most threat to happen, and it, it could happen. So you do not wanna cross the line. My marshals mean business, okay? Don't jump in the line. Um, and then you're gonna help me reward the families um, with candy for their job well done. All right, I'm going to number you off 1 to 12, and then I'm going to tell your family where you're going to go. So pay attention to your number, and then I'll tell you where family 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, okay? So family number 1, you're going to be right over here. Okay, family number 2, you're going to kind of be in this back corner. Family 3 is going to be around this table. Explain that in this activity, there will be candy prizes for families that get plots of land in the Cherokee Strip in the center of the classroom. Land will be allocated on a first-come, first-served basis. Families may claim plots of land by being the first to pick up the deed, or sticky note, putting the resources and belongings they've carried on the plot, and sitting or standing around the boundaries of the plot they're claiming. The more their chips they can get to the chair, the larger their reward will be. Distribute 20 poker chips to each family, representing the resources they are bringing with them to the property they hope to claim. Show the rules visual included in the lesson materials and demonstrate how to carry chips, bending arms at the elbow, elbow against the rib cage, and palm of the hand facing the floor. Chips must sit on the back of hands and forearms. You just carry them on the back of your arms, and if you drop them, it's okay in this room where we're practicing, but if, once we're in there, if you drop them, they're out of play. All family members must carry some of the chips, and family members should travel together. Chips that fall off become worthless when they hit the ground or another person or object. They may not be retrieved. Give families a few minutes to practice. Marshals should move around the room, judging legal chip carrying. <laughs> Move the families behind the tape line. Position yourself at the other end of the room, near the land plot, so you can see who gets to each chair first. The manager can help with this task, too. Remind them that to claim land, they must pull the sticky note and put their chips on the chair. Start the race with on your marks, get set, go! go. <laughs> The race will only last a few seconds. Announce that the race is over when all the chairs are claimed. Instruct families that did not get land to return behind the tape line. Enlist the marshal's help to settle any claim disputes, and there will probably be some. Then award prizes to successful boomers by multiplying the number of chips they successfully got to their land with the multiplier on their sticky note. So a family that got 12 chips on a chair and pulled the sticky note with a one would get 12 pieces of candy. But a family that got nine chips on a chair and pulled the sticky note with a three would get 27 pieces of candy. Draw everyone's attention to the chips that have fallen all over the classroom. This will be a powerful visual to refer to during the debrief. Have students help pick up the chips and rearrange the classroom for debriefing. Raise your hand. Did you guys pull one of the flags? And you had, how many chips did you get there? Twelve. Twelve. How many chips did you start with? You lost four or five along the way? Four or five. One of them was our kid, but whatever. <laughs> you lost four or five chips along the way. And, how, and the flag you pulled was what number? One. One. So with the flag Use the 
questions in the lesson materials to debrief this activity. Emphasize that just because the land was given away doesn't mean it was free. Help them identify and see the real costs families paid for land, and especially the costs paid by families that raced, lost chips, and got no land. Yeah, we said everybody bore some costs. And those costs can be represented by chips in this game, but imagine the real families that were racing for land. Do you think, even though the land was free, did they have to bear some costs to get the land? <laughs> Preparing rigs and getting things, horses and stuff to even race for the land? That's going to require opportunity costs and choosing some things over others, maybe giving some things up, to maybe trading something so that you can get a horse or a wagon to race for the land. Um, so my question is, was the land really free after all? This type of allocation created incentives that resulted in waste and an inefficient use of resources as they raced to capture the scarce land. Just because you take the price away of something, it doesn't mean that it's not scarce anymore. Just because you take the price away, it's, if it's scarce, people still have to compete for it. <coughs> One way to compete for something is with price. But there's other ways. We can have a dance off, right? We can have dance competition. We can have arm wrestling. There's other ways to compete. You take away price, people are just going to compete in some other way. In this case, there was no price. The land was just being given away for free. And so how did you compete for the land? You raced for it, right? You raced for it. This type of allocation created incentives that resulted in waste and an inefficient use of resources as they race to capture the scarce land. While every allocation mechanism has costs and benefits, this example from history begs the question, is there a better way for governments to allocate scarce resources, such as land? A great follow-up to this activity is to show the land rush sequence from the 1992 film Far and Away, starring Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. The sequence comes near the end of the film and lasts five to 10 minutes. Director Ron Howard went to great lengths to include several historical details in this sequence. 